Um, good morning. Thank you for um, this opportunity. Um, so we, we can all agree that um, establishment of your biocontrol agent is one of the most crucial steps in any biocontrol project. Um, up to this stage, we've invested a lot of money and um, research time and tears and frustration into this agent and yeah, it's crucial to get it established. But a recent paper um, reported that in the 2000s, close to 30% of all biocontrol releases did not establish and we need to understand why. Um, so there are different factors that can influence establishment and I've um, put up a few here. Um, characteristics from your biocontrol species, characteristics from your host plant, climate and habitat, time of release and leaf effects. And I'll make use of this beetle, it's the heather beetle, um, to illustrate some of the points. Um, this beetle was released in New Zealand in 1996, if I'm correct, and establishment was very slow or very low and population buildup was um, slow. And then subsequently research has shown that um, different factors influence the establishment and one of those were mismatch of uh, the climate from which it came to um, here in New Zealand. Um, it also went, underwent quite a, a genetic bottleneck resulting in very small beetles that couldn't cope with winter um, in, in New Zealand in some of the areas. And then also um, the quality of the host plant um, was insufficient, uh, low nitrogen. Um, and I understand that new genetic stock have been um, collected on this beetle and has been released, am I right? And in the hope that it will increase establishment and, and spread and impact of this beetle. Um, but today I want to speak basically more about the Lee effects. So what is the Lee effect? Um, so um, it is basically a decrease in per capita growth rate or individual fitness with a decrease in population size. And there are several causes of the Lee effect. Um, yeah, just basically the Lee effect is some um, organisms just do better when they're in a bigger group. So one of the causes is mate finding failure and it's when there are too few in, a po in the population, they simply can't find each other. Um, imagine a male moth flying around out here in the Canterbury Plains and there's the southwesterly coming through, trying to find that female out there, that one or two females that might be out there is, is quite um, difficult. Um, a second cause could also be the failure to satisfy predators, uh, predator uh, pressure. Um, and this could be um, a defense that um, is not, uh, they, they work at it. So this these larvae, they have formed a little wagon circle trying to protect against the predator. And when the predator approached, they would rear up in this synchronized movement trying to scare it off, or they would regurgitate some of their food trying to scare it off. And it's much more effective when there are a whole group of them rather than just one larvae. It could also be just a situation where you are one in a big group, and so your chances of being taken out is much less if there are many around you. Um, but as, as the population size gets smaller, eventually everybody will be, will be killed. Another cause is the inability to overcome host defenses. Um, it's well known that certain bark beetle species um, need to attack their host plant in mass to be able to overcome those defenses. Reduced thermoregulation. Um, some animals live in a group and um, they can change the temperature of the environment. For example, when we think about penguins, when they huddle together trying to keep warm, um, when that group is too small, it won't, they won't be sufficiently warm and they will eventually die out. So when we, do, when we study our populations, what are some of the typical signs of the Lee effect being present? What are those signatures of an Lee effect? And it's uh, one of them is reduced probability of establishment at small population sizes. When we do small releases, they don't establish. There's reduced per capita growth rate at those small population sizes. And then sometimes there's a threshold below which there is a negative growth rate and eventually those populations will simply die off. So, let me just see where I am in my 
Do you want my glasses? Yeah, I, I'm starting to need those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, ah. theoretical population models indicate that the Lee effect is present, but field evidence has been scarce. So um, one of the um, object or aims of my PhD is to study the Lee effect and to see if it's present in this little cute beetle, which is New Lemma. It's a leaf beetle that has been released against Tradescantia um, in New Zealand. Uh, Tradescantia is a, especially on the North Island, quite a big problem. It forms these thick ma um, carp mats and the forest, um, in the forest and it just outcompetes um, the, the indigenous species. On the South Island, it's uh, not, so, not such a um, big problem because it's quite frost sensitive and it's more to frost protected areas. Um, the beetle has been released in nine, uh, no, 2011 and I understand it's doing quite well on the North Island. In some places, um, it, uh, Tradescantia has disappeared and some of the native species is coming back. So, but coming back to my PhD project, we want to know if there is an Lee effect in, this, in the population um, when we do small releases. And secondly, we want to know what are the mechanisms driving it. So, my methods, what I did is um, we made several small releases um, on created patches. We did create patches because this allowed us to um, make them very isolated from each other and also to make sure that there is no background um, tradescantia to which our beetles can disappear to or um, background beetles coming to our patches. Mm -hmm. And we did this at the beginning of the summer and by the end of the summer we evaluated each site on the probability of establishment and the, the, the growth rate. And some results, oh, this is not a good, but okay, on the x-axis is our release size, on the y-axis is probability of establishment, and we can see that it increased nicely as our release size increased the, the um, probability of establishment. And then we can also see again our release size and um, population growth rate, it increases as release size increases. Okay, and then we wanted to see what is causing the Lee effect. And I'm giving a hint here of which the first mechanism is that we looked at. And yes, were there any mate, limita mate limitation? Did they struggle to find each other? And for this, we again did small releases and we used release sizes of 2, 8, and 16 adults. We used new unmated uh, males and females and we left them in the field for three weeks. And the thinking behind the three weeks was that um, these beetles are in their prime, they're in a small patch, if they, they should be able to find each other. Um, and yeah, so after three weeks, weeks we re recovered all the beetles and we looked at the females and males and to see if the females are unmated or mated. And results? On the x-axis is the total number of live males recovered and the y-axis the probability of the females being mated and we can see it increases with the number of males that we recovered. So yes, mate limitation could potentially be a, a um, mechanism driving the Lee effect. We also, was, um, we also thought that it could be a second mechanism and again my hint to everybody. <laughs> Could it be? I need some water. Um, I shall get you some just to see. Yeah, thank you. Uh, could it be generalist predation? And what we we saw very high levels of larval predation when we did all our um, field trials, and we thought we should investigate it. Oh, thanks so much. <laughs> That's better. Yes. So yeah, we wanted to investigate how um, predators are impacting our lobby. So we did some predator exclusion trials and we exposed eggs and subsequent lobby to predators in different situations. We used uh, totally closed uh, cages where predators couldn't access the lobby. 
um, partially open cages so we can mimic some of the environmental conditions in the closed cages, our sham cages, and then uh, cages that were totally, or no cages actually. And we also used two densities of, of eggs or larvae, uh, high and low, in the thinking that at high densities the Lee effect would, there would be safety in numbers. So we, and this is the result, this is a uh, cage type on the x-axis and a proper proportion of larvae um, developing through to the pupil stage on the y-axis. And you can see, yes, uh, generous predation had a big impact on our larvae. In the closed cage, uh, the larvae were able to survive, but none in the open or sham cages. Um, but at the tested larval densities, there were no significant influence um, of the densities, but we suspect that uh, we used densities w that were just too low to saturate our predators. And in the coming summer, I'll be testing <coughs> higher densities of larvae to be able to show that there is safety, safety in numbers for the larvae. Yeah. So in conclusion, um, establishment of small populations of new lemma is um, influenced by the Lee effect. Um, preliminary results indicate that it could be driven by predation and mate limitation. And as both of these mechanisms are fundamental in, uh, ecological interactions, we can think that the Lee effect probably influenced the establishment of many biocontrol agents. And I just want to say thank you to my supervisors and my technical assistants and all these organizations and any questions.